Hey everyone, so would you like to learn how to make this snake game as fast as possible using 2D URP and the new input system? Well, if you do, then come along that I'll teach you this right now. Well, first things first, the structure we are going to need is these three empty game objects, the setup here, the separator here, and the environment here. Uh, you can see that all of them were created uh, directly with 000. If you don't know how to do it, I'm going to put a link above here in the card for you to see how to do it in 10 seconds, just so you, all your game objects always start at 000. Inside setup, you're going to have your main camera. You have you have changed it from skybox to solid color, and then input this color here, 4B1538, or you know, any color you like. Uh, then you're going to create this global volume here. And if you can't find it or if you don't have anything like this, you're going to have to install. You're going to have to go to package manager here. Uh, then you search for post processing, uh, this one here, and you install it. Mine is already installed. Uh, the input system, uh, also, you're also going to install it. It might pop up uh, something asking you to restart Unity. You just agree with it. And afterwards, you're just going to come here, just right click, volume, global volume, select it, and then you're going to have it. Here, you can just click on new. It's going to create one automatically for you. Uh, mine has already created one. Um, by the way, I have already one here because I installed this all in one sprite shader, but yours, but you can also always create, create new one here and it will be stored in your project. I just start mine in these post processing profiles here and then you can just um, you can just add an override here for post processing and bloom in this case I just put this tint on bloom the BE 5C667 and this amount of intensity this amount of threshold and just so we have something like this just don't go bananas with it because then your computer is going to melt itself so don't go bananas but that's how you do it if you are having trouble seeing it because because you you put this volume and it's not showing please refer to the comments down below because there are some common troubleshooting problems that you might be bumping into but that's not a big problem afterwards you are going to have environment here and inside environment i have put borders the borders are like left wall for example it's simply a sprite render from this unit to the full square i have just repositioned it changed the scaling the right wall is the same thing floor and the ceiling and uh, i could have put a collider in them just so when the snake collides with them it dies but i have decided to make it in a different way probably a worse way than simply putting colliders but it's just to teach you a different way than simply colliding with something else that's the borders and then we have the head the heads of the snake has uh some stuff here has a squat uh, has a square for its head let's double click on it to zoom in has a player input you just go down here add component player input it's going to be empty at first but then you create on create a new input action asset it's going to create this one here this default it comes with two mappings the when the player is acting and when the ui is acting and you don't have to worry about it right now because when you change it to send messages all those messages in these game objects are going to be listening for inputs you know so you don't have to do anything else rather than copy those settings then you're going to create this snake controller script putting its prefab here from for the body uh, for the child list you don't have to put in an serialized field and the apple prefab here finally you put a box collider here not a trigger and a rigid body 2d i only recommend you to change the graphic scale just so your block doesn't fall to infinity and beyond and what is the body transform and the food transform here well i made prefabs out of them here let me just go to the snake folder prefabs the body is simply a copy of the head but a little bit smaller here in the scaling uh with a, a different tint with a collider with the script of the snake body and this his collider is a trigger because i don't want it to collide for real and you can see that i put the collider smaller here inside it because when the snake makes curves uh, I don't want the snake to collide with itself, but if if it did collide with itself, 
if, if the collider were bigger, it would collide with itself in every curve and the game was crashing because of it. So I made the collider much smaller just so it only collides with itself when it, it really wants to collide with itself, you know. And the food or the apple, you know, you can give it any name you want. is the same thing. It's just even smaller. It's just the, another color. The tint here is FF4E4E. -E. And it has no scripts here. It has a collider, it, which is a trigger. And that's all the assets you need. The prefabs are here. The post-process profile is here. The scene is here. Let's just go back to the scene. And then finally the scripts. Let's start with the head script here, with the script that you need to put in the head here, snake controller. Let's open the snake controller up. Let's zoom in a little bit, just so you can see it a little bit better. Well, what do we have here? We have three serializable fields, but as we have seen before, the child list is unnecessary, so I can just change it to being a private field here without being a serializable field. Let's just change the naming as, as well. All right, we have a bunch of private stuff, the Apple in game, how how is it going to be located in game, the direction the snake's moving, the saved direction from before, and the target position it's going to try to get into. When it starts, we reset everything. We could we could wrap the these three lines here in our reset positions and apples and everything, but yeah, since it's so small, we don't need it. Then we have this own move. Remember when I told you about the player input here and that it would send messages to all those methods? Well, here we have one of them, the on move one. It receives a movement that is simply when you move with your arrow keys or WASD or any other input system, you know. And then you extract the vector two from this input value. And then I save it on my direction and it calls every time I move. So I don't have to write anything else for this purpose. And then finally on update, we do a lot of stuff. We move the snake here. We decide its direction. And if it's moving horizontally or vertically, we just we just save the direction. Just so with all of these, we decide the direction for the snake to go. And it keeps on following this direction unless you change it. Then we check if it's out of bounds. Let's go see how it, it works. Check if it's out of bounds. We have just put um, hard coder in here. That's terrible manners of mine. But you know, it's just a quick prototype. So no no foul here. And if, it, if we indeed try to go out of bounds, we'll just reload the scene and start everything again. After trying to check if we're out of bounds, we set, we set the targets for our children. Because you know, uh, the snake game is all about getting your body bigger. We with the foods you eat. So here we go through all of our children. If we have more than one, we get the their snake body controller that we're going to take a look at as well in a little bit. And then we set their target position to be our head, to be the position of our head, set head target. And then for every children, we set their body targets. And every children is like going to target the previous, the previous body part just so you know they move in a, in a line that's all we do on update we just move check out of bounds and set and set a new target for our children and when we collide with something we check if it's food if that's food then we are going to instantiate another child for our body we are going to set its collider to false just for a moment just so we don't collide with ourselves instantly and then we start a core routine that will reactivate our collider in like half a second it was hard coded indeed but it's just a ballpark number just to make it work and then we are going to instantiate we're uh, almost going to initialize how many cycles of the head this part of the body is going to have to wait to start moving. Um, it just increases with the amount of children it has. Then we're going to add this piece of the body into our children list. And then finally, we are going to spawn a new apple in the game. And here's how we spawn it. Again, I have hard coded in here. It's bad practice. But again, just to be quicker, I've done it like this. And that's it. The snake controller is a piece of script that controls the snake. And also, it's not being the best practice ever because a, we have hard-coded inputs here and we are controlling more than the, just the snake here because we are controlling the spawning of food in the game, but that's okay. Finally, in the snake body here, let's also zoom in a little bit just so you can see it better. And remember, this script needs to go to the body part of the snake. We, in the beginning, just set which other body part 
position we are going to target. We also set how many cycles of the head we are going to have to wait until we start moving. And then we set its position by waiting for the movements of all previous parts. And finally, on update, we just move it towards the next body part. And that's it. That's the game. You don't need anything else to make it work. That's a very simple game. And if you want to see me improve it and give it more juice in our next video, please let me know in the comments below. If you like this video and if you like a lot of hacks for growing your games much faster, please subscribe because the channel is all about it. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.